OK. So, OK, so we can start. So today is the last, let's say, formal lesson about Android. And just an information for the next Thursday. Uh, in the next Thursday, we will have a supervisor group with a particular focus about Android. But unfortunately, we cannot go in La Dispe. So please bring your laptops and also your questions here. And uh, OK, today we will continue. We will finish our set of examples in Android. Unfortunately, there are some problems with the Wi-Fi connection. So I don't know if we will be able to try the application, but let's try. Um, and so today we will develop a Android client for our um, to-do list REST server. OK? So uh, I created a new version, a separate version of the REST server for this exercise. And uh, there are some differences with the previous uh, versions. So for example, here in the get, instead of uh, returning a, a task object that contains a list of tasks, I return uh, the list of tasks directly. This simplify some uh, Java classes uh, on Android. And also, here, I specify another uh, address, the address 0.0.0.0. .0 that means that now the server uh, runs on uh, all the network interfaces of this PC. So uh, now I can use the IP address of this PC to access the, the server, OK? So if in the browser I put the IP address of my PC, uh, obviously. OK, maybe it's, let me check uh, the IP address. Uh, OK. Yeah, I need to run the server, obviously. OK. So by using the IP address, I can get the list of tasks. OK? And so the idea is to use the same uh, IP address from my phone to access the REST information. Obviously, since this IP is not public, uh, I need to connect my smartphone on the same uh, Wi-Fi network of my PC. OK? Good. OK. So let's start with the, the application. So in order to, um, to make HTTP requests from Android, there are many ways of making HTTP requests. Uh, and there are many third party libraries. Um, and uh, I will use, uh, oh, let me open <laughs> the new. OK the empty project. Uh, I will use uh, a third party library to perform HTTP requests that is Spring for Android. OK, this one. Spring is actually a big framework uh, for working with Java. And uh, there is a, a separate part for Android. And as I already told you, to use uh, third-party libraries in uh, Android, you can use Gradle. And so we can copy 
the name of the library and put it in the Gradle file of the project. Okay? So in this Gradle file, the Gradle file related to my application, I can simply add my library. So implementation and I passed the name of the library and Gradle automatically download the library from the web. Okay? And uh, we also need a library to serialize objects between my PC and the smartphone. Uh, so I will use the Jackson data bind library. And uh, in the same way, I can copy the name of the library and put it in the Gradle file. Okay. Oh, there is a problem. Ah, okay. Good. So, uh, another problem. No? <laughs> Why? So let me copy the library from the solution. Okay, and the idea is to have um, a first activity to show the list of tasks and two other activities to uh, insert a new task and to update or delete an existing task. So let me copy this one. Okay. Okay. No. Okay, so let me define a new activity, the main activity. So right click on the project folder, new activity, empty activity. So let's call it main activity. Oh, there is already a main activity, good. Uh, because this one is not empty, sorry. Okay. Okay, there is already a main activity. And uh, let's start with the layout of the activity. Okay. So, I delete the Hello World label and I will use a relative layout. So, let me change the constraint layout into a relative layout. Okay. And also here. Good. And uh, to show a list of tasks, we need a widget that is the list view. So list view is a particular widget to show a list of elements. I drag and drop it into the, the relative layout. Um, and uh, okay. So obviously this list view will be filled uh, via code dynamically. And so let's move uh, to the logic of the application, okay? I will create a new package to contain a special class to perform HTTP requests. So 
So let me call the package HTTP and inside the package I create a new Java class let's call it uh, okay HTTP uh, requests my HTTP requests okay and here I will define the methods I need to perform HTTP requests so let's start with uh, the definition of the address of the of the server so string base URL here I need to put the IP of this PC that is this one so HTTP the IP the port on which the server is running 8080 and then API slash v1.0 okay good Mm. double quotes okay and now I can define uh, four methods and the first one is the method for getting the list of tasks from the server so this method uh, will return a list of what? of task okay so we need uh, a class to model uh, our tasks okay we will define it later on and get uh, tasks okay so let me create a new java class for modeling tasks okay so um, in the task class I need to specify all the all the fields of uh, of a task so the id that is an integer value the description let me private okay string description and the urgent field that is an integer and I can also, I must define also the getters and setters for these fields. So generate getter and setter for all the fields. Okay, good. So this is the Java class, the entity class that models a task. Okay. Here I can import the task and also the list good okay to perform HTTP requests with the, the spring for Android library we need to define a rest template object so rest template template equals to new rest template and then this object provides us many different uh, methods to perform HTTP, HTTP requests so for example for getting an array of tasks we can say rest uh, sorry template dot get for object okay and here we need to specify the base URL plus the part of the URL depending on the request so slash tasks and we also need to specify the class of the of the of the response that is an array of task okay and then we can simply return the list of tasks as we need to 
cast the array into a list because the returning object is a list so arrays dot as list tasks okay so this is the method for getting a list of tasks from our uh, rest server then there is the method uh, for deleting a task so public this is a void method we don't need any parameters any returning parameters so void public static void delete task and here we need the ID of the task okay and so we can copy and paste this line of code so I create a new REST template and uh, I use this REST template to delete the task from the server okay so template.delete and we need to specify the URL base URL plus tasks slash the ID of the task okay and then we have the method for updating a task so public static void update task and uh, we need a task parameter to be updated sorry we create the REST template and uh, we use the PUT method of the REST template so we specify the, the URL so base URL plus tasks and plus the ID of the task okay and we also pass to the function the task to be updated okay the new version of the task good and finally we have the method for uh, adding a new task so public static void add task we need a task as a parameter the new task so let me call it new task we create the rest template and we use it to perform a post okay so base url plus slash tasks okay the task to be added so new task and we also need to specify the class of the object we are trying to to insert so task dot class okay so this is a java class that contains four methods to interact with our rest, rest server good and we will use this class uh, from our activities for example so let's go back to the activity that is here uh, obviously we are trying to to perform uh, inter HTTP requests so we need the permission for doing that so in the manifest file okay we need to add the permission for accessing uh, internet okay so use this permission Android name internet okay good and so now let's go back to the activity okay at the moment we have only one single widget in the activity that is the list view so let me define a variable for the list view list view let's call it 
tasks list okay and now we get the reference to the list view in the onCreate method so find view by id r dot id and I forgot to define an ID for the list view so let's go back to the activity and here I define an ID for the list view so um, task list okay so r.id dot task list okay good And now we have to perform an HTTP request for getting the list of tasks and uh, dynamically uh, update the list view. And uh, to perform HTTP requests, we must use a new thread. So we cannot perform an HTTP request in the thread of the main activity. So we need to use uh, an async task that is that. Uh, perform some operation in a new thread okay so uh, in this uh, async task we will get a list of tasks so the last parameter the only one that is important for us is a list of tasks that is what we are getting from uh, uh, the server okay And then we can execute the sync task. Okay. Now we have to implement some methods inside the sync task. The doing background method and also the on post execute method. Okay. So here we are uh, performing an HTTP request. Sorry an HTTP request uh, inside a new thread so let's define a try catch block and inside the try we perform the return of um, of the get so my HTTP request dot get tasks okay and if there are some problems we simply return null okay and inside the on post execute we can access the list of tasks okay so if the list of tasks is different it's not equals to null here we can update the list view with the list of tasks okay and uh, to update the list view we need an array adapter okay new array adapter we need to specify the context of the activity we need to specify the layout of each element and uh, Android has um, a default layout for each uh, list view item so that is uh, Android R dot um, layout dot simple no android dot r dot layout dot simple list item one okay this is the default layout for a list item and uh, we need also obviously 
to specify the list of tasks. Okay? And then we, we can set this adapter into the task list view. So task list dot set adapter adapter. Okay? Good. If the list if there are some problems in the HTTP request, we can simply uh, show a notification to the user. Okay? Uh, HTTP problem. Okay, good. So in the um, onCreate method of our uh, activity, we perform an HTTP request in a new thread with the async task uh, class, okay? And uh, we update dynamically the list view with the list of tasks, okay? So let me try the application. So run, run application, okay, the server is running, Okay. Okay. Obviously, there are some problems with EduROM. So, let me try again. Try disconnecting and reconnecting the phone no you have to trust me because unfortunately there are some problems with EduROM maybe the port uh, oh yeah yeah uh, yeah but you are, I'm not okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Let's try. Okay. Let's. Uh, what is the IP? So let's try with the terminal. Uh, pa -pa 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 -pa. Okay. Let's try with this new one IP. So in the HTTP class okay let's stop and run again the server and now I install uh, I need to connect to the same Wi-Fi network on my phone Uh, no. Uh, 
it doesn't work so macbook pro connect doesn't work I don't know why any idea okay we can continue with our example and maybe we will try later on so now we need a button on the main activity to open the new activity for uh, inserting a new task so let me add to the layout a special button that is a floating action button the floating action button is uh, a special button that doesn't have any text but uh, it can stay on top of the interface even if I scroll the list of my task so I can add an icon to my to my button so let's search for an add okay this one is okay good so as you can see is this button and we can put it on the bottom part of the layout so we can uh, um, no sorry okay can put it at the bottom of the screen and also in the okay here we are and uh, I can assign an ID to this button so let's put button add okay and then from the code I can define a new variable to model the floating action button and I can get the reference to this button button added okay and I can set an on-click listener on this button dot set on click listener new <coughs> on click listener and here I need to open a new activity for inserting a new task okay so let me define a new activity right click activity empty activity let's call it add activity okay and uh, let's start with the layout okay relative layout good and here we need um, the widgets for um, specifying the description of the task and the fact that the task is urgent or not so I can insert a text view that is a label for the description okay 
and uh, I can also insert another text view here that is uh, an edit text okay to specify the description so text the ID is text description and uh, let me put it this is the text description label and I put this one on the right side of the previous one okay no doesn't work so let me try with a linear layout horizontal okay here we are and I put this one inside the linear layout okay good so here the text is empty okay and then below this linear layout we can put a checkbox okay not here but below the linear layout okay so we need to put it uh, let me assign an ID also to this widget layout description okay and so the checkbox is below the layout description okay we need also to change the layout 8 of the linear layout okay and so the text of the checkbox is urgent okay and finally we need okay also to specify the ID for the checkbox checkbox urgent and finally we need a button okay to add the task so this button is below the checkbox okay and the text is add okay and the ID is button add okay good so let's go back in the Java activity in the main activity and here we can define an intent to open the new activity so need to specify the context sorry and uh, the Java class of the add activity so add activity dot class and then we can start the activity okay and now let me open the add activity Java class and here we can start defining the logic of the add activity so uh, we need the reference to the description widget so edit text text description we need the reference to the checkbox the urgent checkbox so checkbox urgent okay and we need also the reference to the add button okay so button add button okay now we get the reference text description is equals to find view by id r dot id dot text description and checkbox urgent is equals to 
find you by id r dot id dot text uh, sorry checkbox urgent and the button is find view by id r dot id dot button added okay and now we can define the on click listener for the add button okay so the first thing to do is to create a new task so create a new task to be added okay so I create a new instance of the task class and um, I set the, the fields of this task with the uh, widget values so t.setDescription and now I get the description text from the widget so text description dot get text dot to string okay and uh, if the checkbox is uh, checked I can set the urgent field of the task to uh, 1 instead if the checkbox is not checked t dot set urgent 0 okay so now I have the task and I need to perform the HTTP request so also in this case we need a new async task okay now we don't need a return, returning parameter I will use a boolean to, to check if the HTTP request um, returns some errors or not dot execute okay I need to implement the methods doing background and also the on post execute okay so here the pattern is the same try catch try catch block here I can uh, perform the HTTP request so may my HTTP request dot add task T okay uh, okay final okay and if there are some problems no oh, here I can return true that means everything is okay instead if there are some problems I return false okay and in the on post execute method I check the ret value if ret equals to true this means that the task was successfully added okay otherwise there is an error and I can show a notification to the user okay HTTP problem uh, no uh, okay toast dot length long uh, pa -pa -pa -pa. okay it's toast dot make text no okay there is a problem get application context the string and the length oh yeah 
no let me copy it from the main activity sorry okay here we are so uh, if the operation is okay we can simply reopen the main activity to update uh, the list of tasks so I create a new intent to open to reopen the main activity so intent new intent get application context main activity dot class and start activity intent okay good and finally we need uh, a new activity to update an existing task here the idea is to define an on-click listener on each element of the list view in the main activity and when I click on a specific item, on a specific task, I will open a new activity to delete or update the specific task, okay? So, let me we can define in the main activity on the list view task list dot set on item click listener okay new on item on click listener so this callback uh, will be executed uh, whenever I click on a specific uh, task in my list view okay so here I can open the activity to update or delete a specific task okay so let me okay so the first thing to do is to get the selected task and I can do that by using the adapter view so parent get item at position and I use the position parameter to get the selected task, task. okay then I need an intent to a new activity a new let's call it uh, up detail activity okay and uh, so let me create the new activity so new activity empty activity detail activity okay let's go back to the main good and we also need a mechanism to uh, communicate to the detail activity the selected task okay and for this purpose I can use a bundle okay bundle B is a special class to communicate data between activities okay so new bundle Uh, what is the problem? B dot put serializable the key. So let's define a key task and uh, the object task. Okay, there is a problem. Sorry? Ah, uh, new. Thank you. Okay, and uh, okay this is a, there is an error 
because uh, uh, we need to specify that the task is serializable. Okay, so we need to implement the serializable interface. Okay, in the task class, and then we can use the put serializable method. Okay. Then we can uh, communicate this bundle to the detail activity with the intent dot put extra b extra with the s okay and then we can open the detail activity okay so now when we tap on a specific task this method is executed the specific task is retrieved from the list and uh, the detail activity is uh, is executed and uh, with the reference uh, to the specific task okay so now let's design the detail activity let's start with the layout okay solution okay so relative layout okay then we can copy and paste the layout for adding a task because it's the same okay so I copy and paste this one good and but this button is now the button delete okay and the text is delete good and we also need a new button for updating the task okay so this is below the button delete and the text is uh, update and the ID is button update okay good so let's go back to the Java code we can copy and paste some variables from the add activity maybe the text description, the checkbox, okay. Then we need uh, the, um, the two buttons. So the first one is the delete button and the second one is the update button. So now I get the references, the widgets, uh, r.id.textdescription, r.id.checkbox urgent, and the two buttons, the delete one, Mm. Okay. Button delete and the update button. Okay. Now we can uh, um, 
we can get the selected task from the bundle. So I can get a reference to the bundle. B is equals to get intent dot get extras. Okay? And the selected task. So let me define a variable for the task. The selected task is equals to b dot get serializable, and I need to specify the same key I defined before. So task, okay? And so we can fill the widgets with the task details. So the text description is set text selected task dot get description. Okay. And if the selected task is urgent, I can check the urgent checkbox. Otherwise, no. Okay? Good. And now, finally, we can define the two on-click listener for the two buttons. So for the delete button, I will perform the HTTP request for uh, deleting the selected task. Okay, so as usual, we need a, an async task to perform the HTTP request in a new thread. Otherwise, we will get an exception. Boolean dot execute. I need to implement the two methods doing background, but also on post execute. Okay, here the same pattern try and catch. So my HTTP request dot delete task selected task dot get ID. Okay. If the HTTP request is okay, I can return true. And in case of errors, I return false. Okay. And here I can check the returning value. So if there is an error, so if not, right, I can show a notification error. So toast. I can copy and paste from the add activity, maybe. Oh, also from here. Uh, OK. Good. Instead, if everything is OK, I can simply reopen the main activity, OK, to show the updated list of tasks. So let me copy the intent to open the main activity. OK. Good. And finally, we can define the on-click listener for the update button. Okay. So here we need to get the new description 
and the new check uh, urgent field from the widgets so string new description equals to uh, text description dot get text okay dot to string and uh, int new urgent so if the urgent checkbox is checked the new urgent variable is equals to one uh, sorry otherwise it's equals to zero okay Then we can update the selected task with the new values. So selected task dot set description new description and selected task dot set urgent new urgent. And finally we can perform the HTTP requests to update the selected task. So we need the sync task okay we need to implement the methods okay here we can perform the HTTP request to update the task the selected task okay true and in case of errors so let me define a try catch block in case of error I return false okay and here the pattern is the same so if there are some errors I show a notification to the user on the contrary I reopen the main activity okay okay so obviously we should add some um, we can add some uh, new features to the interfaces so for example we could add uh, a button to discriminate the two operations between uh, delete and update but we are running out of time so in the solution you will find these, uh, these features okay let's try again the application for the last time so let me try to connect my phone to the Wi-Fi network of my PC it doesn't work okay so let's try again with EduROM Ah, okay. So maybe it's better to hide my password. Let's rerun the server. Okay. Let's check the IP address. It is different, obviously. Okay, and let's 
let me install the application on my phone there are some errors obviously so you have to trust me you can try the application uh, with your uh, Wi-Fi network um, and so this finished the lesson uh, so I stop the registration here thank you for your attention and if you have any question I will try to help you thank you